G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. Uh, daytime astronomy is something that people don't really think about a lot. I mean, obviously we can take photos of the sun, uh, but when you see a photo of a planet on the background of a deep blue sky, there's a kind of cognitive dissonance that goes on in our heads. Obviously this is possible. There's stuff above us all the time. We can't see the stars, but the planets are actually bright enough to image during the day. So even though it's not the best way to photograph planets, it's still something you should just do. So I'm going to show you how I take a photo of a planet during the day. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. You want to buy a telescope? I got telescopes, anything you need. High Point Scientific, they support their equipment and they have a price match guarantee. You just say my name, tell them I sent you. They'll do you a good deal, you know what I'm saying? Trust me, this stuff's so good, you'll be addicted for the rest of your life. <laughs> Before we get started, I should probably note that a few people have called me out in the past because they've mistaken my sarcasm for instruction. If there's any suggestion of looking at the sun on this channel, trust me, it's not an instruction. And if you think it's an instruction, <laughs> it may not be a failing of this channel, it may be a failing of the entire education system in your country. <laughs> now, taking a photo of a planet during the day presents a few challenges. And the first challenge, of course, is that you are trying to find something in the sky that you really can't see with your own eyes. If you are a mobile astrophotographer, if you have a mount or a telescope that you need to set up before you do this, then it's tricky to get polar aligned or star aligned at all. So what I would recommend is actually doing so the night before while the stars are in the sky, while you can get a pretty good star alignment and polar alignment. That way, when you use your go-to the next day, you won't go smack bang onto the planet. Uh, no, most of the time it'll go nearby the planet and then you can use your finder scope to just sort of dial it in. that's pointed at Venus. Now, can you see Venus anywhere up there? Not a chance. Uh, and this again is why you should keep your finder scope very well aligned. You can do this on a tree or a street light. Just make sure that what you're seeing through the finder scope is what you're seeing through the eyepiece or the camera. Here's an example of what it looks like through the finder scope. You can see it's a very small pinprick of light. And depending on the planet, this can be quite hard to do. This will probably only work with Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Once the planet is in view and you've got it on screen, it can also be tricky to focus. Uh, we're in the day now, so heat is an issue and heat radiates off all the surrounding Earth and roofs and everywhere around you so that the view that we have of the planet really isn't ideal. You're just not going to get the same sort of quality that you would at night time. But try and get focused. I like to use the edge of the planet so I look at that disc and I see how it shimmers and I see how it gets quite soft as you focus out and gets tighter as you focus in. And I use that as a rough guide and then once it's in focus you can probably make out a bit of the surface detail. Like on the bands of Jupiter you can see some knots there and you can use them to focus in. Now remember the seeing will be shaky so it will come in and out so really spend a few moments as you check focus to see if it does come into focus during one of those lucky seeing patches. Now, despite my insistence on the use of black and white cameras for this sort of photography, which will always get a better image, uh, you may be tempted to use a one-shot color camera here, and it is a lot easier. And it makes it easier to just see that background blue of the sky, and as you dial in your color calibration settings in Fire Capture or whatever software you're using to capture the planet, it can make it easier to get a nice even color balance on the image. And there is something really nice about seeing a planet on that blue background. It really is something to behold. As if all of this wasn't hard enough, processing is also an issue. You'll find when you go to stack a video of the planet that you've taken, some software may have trouble aligning it because everything is so bright in the image. 
you have a lot less contrast than you would at night time, so alignment points might be harder for the software to discern. So you might have to tweak the parameters to make sure the stacking algorithm works properly at all. Also during the day, the dust motes on your camera just seem to be really, really prominent. You'll see this, uh, any kind of little dust shows up as a ring or some sort of garbage on the camera. So before you actually press record on that video, just move the planet to a cleaner area of the chip. At the end of the day, the image that you take of the planet will not be as good as you would have taken at night time, and that's okay. This is really a bit of a novelty. And trust me, people enjoy seeing daytime photos of the planets. I enjoy seeing daytime photos of the planets. I think it's pretty cool. Well, that's it for this video. This was just a quick and easy thing to try. If you have a telescope and a camera, you can do this, so you may as well. It's just one of those things to check off the astronomy bucket list. Thanks for watching my little channel. It really blows me away that there are so many people subscribed these days. Uh, I do enjoy seeing your photos when you take me in them. Uh, I have been taking a few little photos in the backyard. I've been focusing on planets lately, so here are some nighttime shots of the planets. Jupiter, Saturn and Mars. They're all looking really good right now. So if you have a chance to do some planetary, this is the time of year to do that. Jupiter and Saturn are obviously past opposition, but Mars is getting closer and closer and bigger and bigger. So it's really looking good. I did also take the opportunity last night and over the last few nights, despite really cloudy weather, just taking images in between the sucker holes to get my first image of the M27 Dumbbell Nebula. spectacular planetary nebula this is. You can see the blue progenitor star in the middle that started this stellar outburst which started about three to four thousand years ago. I hope you have clear skies and I hope you're enjoying this astronomy journey whatever type of astronomer you are. My name is Dylan O'Donnell you've been watching Star Stuff. Remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. <laughs>